Hey y'all, I am back with a new what's for dinner. I'm going to be showing y'all everything I fed my family for dinner last week. So first up, I grabbed this package of Go Star chili seasoning from my pantry. Sounded super good this night and I'm just following the directions on the back of the package. So I'm just mixing it with some water and tomato paste. You'll also need a pound of some lean ground beef. So I'm just going to get that dumped directly into that liquid and I'm just going to pull out my little mini whisk and I'm going to get that meat broken apart. I'm just going to keep on stirring it until it blends perfectly with the liquid. If you use like a tray of ground beef versus the rose, this would fall apart in literal seconds, but the rolls are a little bit cheaper and I do like to save money where I can. But anytime I have done this method of like placing raw meat into a sauce, I always end up loving the end result. So I'm just going to let that boil for around 30, 35 minutes. It's going to reduce down a lot and that meat's going to become nice and tender. Meanwhile, I am going to shred up this block of extra sharp cheddar cheese. I'm also going to boil up this box of spaghetti because we're going to do it restaurant, like three-way style. And the rest of the family also wanted chili dogs as well. So I'm going to boil up some hot dogs. But here is the final result of the chili sauce. It's definitely on the watery side, which is perfect over spaghetti, but... Not so great for chili dogs. I do love the packet though, like the flavor of it, but gotta deduct a couple of points for the fact that it does not want to thicken up. This is definitely one of our favorite meals to have. I know that not everyone watching is familiar with Gold Star, um, but it's a restaurant that's like main focus is in Cincinnati style chili. The closest one to us is about an hour away. So at least a couple times a year, if we're in that area, we like to grab it. And it's always such a treat. Um, like flavor wise, it's definitely not like your normal chili. It has like a cinnamon taste to it. Definitely unique, but very, very good. Uh, my favorite recipe to make of this at home is like the one by the Pioneer Woman. I've shared it a couple times on my channel. It is perfect, but this Gold Star packet is definitely good to keep on hand. It's a great, like, easy, quick dinner option. Okay, so on this night, Kroger had a really good sale on these like eight pound bags of jumbo potatoes. So I knew instantly that I wanted to have like a baked potato night where the baked potato is like the main course since they are so big. And one thing about me is baked potatoes is like really up there on my top three list of favorite foods. So I was super excited. So I have washed and scrubbed the skins and I just dry them off very well. And I'm just taking a knife and poking holes all over the potato. There's only two here because on this night the kids were next door at my father-in-law's house usually at least once a week he'll have the kids over and make them dinner or like buy them something and they always look forward to it uh, but moving on here I'm just drizzling the potatoes with olive oil and kosher salt and just rubbing it in this makes them like restaurant style where the skins are crispy but if you don't like that just simply wrap them in some um, tin foil and that will steam them and you'll have like the soft skins but I place that in a 400 degree oven usually for an hour but since these were bigger I did add 10 extra minutes and I just placed those directly on the racks so now I'm going to dress this up the way that I like it I do take my potatoes seriously so I do like to fluff it up first and then I add a pat of butter and I like to season it with salt and black pepper then I like to go back in and just kind of distribute that evenly. And then I'm going to add a good amount of shredded cheese. I usually like to pop it in the microwave for about 20 seconds for presentation purposes, just to melt that cheese a little faster. I like to add a good amount of sour cream. And if you've been with me, you already know I have to have A1 sauce on my baked potatoes for like the ultimate flavor. So to me, this is the perfect baked potato. Sometimes I do like to add cooked and crumbled bacon over the top, but a lot of times we have it just like this and we're just as happy. So to go along with it, I also made some side salads. So we have some romaine lettuce in here, cherry tomatoes, I did chop up some pepperoni and salami and also grated some Parmesan cheese over the top and I did mine with some Italian dressing and it was very good as well. I'm such like a sides loving person so to me this was just the best little dinner ever but even my meat loving husband loved it just as much and as you can imagine it was extremely filling. 
The next night, I wanted to make a really nice like roast chicken dinner. So I have my whole chicken here. It's a little over five pounds. And as you can see, it's under $9 and I'm going to be making two separate meals with it. So I am going to spatchcock this chicken. I have never done that before and I have been curious. So if you don't know what that means, it's basically just removing the backbone so that the chicken can lay flat. So I found the easiest way to do that is with kitchen scissors. So as you can see, I'm just going along the right side of that bone. And then I will, of course, go and do the same thing to the left side. So this wasn't too hard to do or anything, but the sounds of it cutting was a little bit disturbing. Um, I just think that me dealing with a whole chicken will probably never come natural, but I do keep on trying. So anyways, I got that turned over to the front and I'm just kind of placing all of my weight onto it so that I can crack that breastbone so that it can actually lay flat. The next step, I'm going to make a good seasoned butter. So I have a half a stick of room temperature butter added to this small bowl. Now I looked at so many recipes online and nothing just stood out to me. So I just did my own thing. Um, I seasoned it with some onion and garlic powder, this Kinder's buttery steakhouse rub, some paprika, some black pepper, and lastly, some of this lemon pepper seasoning. This is a salt-free seasoning, so I went pretty heavy-handed with that. And now I'm just going to fold all of that together to make sure that all of the seasonings are distributed well throughout the butter. So now I can start to season this chicken. So I'm going to start by separating the skin from the meat. The only way really to do that is just to get in there with your hands. It's definitely a little bit messy or a lot messy, but it's all good in the end. So I am making sure to go all the way down through the legs and thighs because I want that seasoned butter to go down there as well, which is what I'm doing now. I'm just taking it by the handful and pressing it all the way down, definitely adding a lot to the breast. And I'm just going to start massaging that all over. So this is of course going to season the meat really well under the skin. And it's also going to help keep everything nice and juicy. So whatever was left over, I'm just kind of rubbing all over the top of the skin. And now I'm just going in with some avocado oil and drizzling that all over the top and rubbing that in. That's what's going to make this crisp up really nicely. I'm going to season this really well with some sea salt. And I promise I washed my hands like a million times throughout this process. I am not about that cross-contamination. So now I'm just adding on lots of black pepper. I also decided to go in with some paprika. I thought that would help the color. I'm not really sure if it did or not. Um, and then lastly, I'm just going in with some more of that lemon pepper seasoning. So I'm just rubbing that around a little bit to make sure that nothing's too like splotchy. And this is ready to go in the oven. But first I have to show you all the vegetables. I already have some potatoes cut in this roasting pan, some big pieces of carrots, and I did a whole head of some whole garlic cloves. I was really nervous about that garlic burning, but I'm happy to announce it did not, and that garlic was incredible. So I just drizzled all those veggies with some more avocado oil, and I got that seasoned with salt, pepper, onion powder, and I did the Kinder's Steakhouse Rub again. So I'm just going in with my hands. I'm getting these vegetables rubbed down with that seasoned oil. And now I'm just taking a whole lemon. I cut it into wedges, placing that all on the dish. And now I can take that chicken and place it over the vegetables. That went in a 425 degree oven and I ended up baking it around an hour. I originally was going to let it go longer, but when I went and checked on it and took a meat thermometer to it, it was just right. So I took it out. I let it rest for a good like 15 minutes and I thought it looked gorgeous, smelled great. I served it with some buttery rolls, some French style green beans, and I made some homemade macaroni and cheese. I just boiled up some macaroni noodles, drained it, and I added some leftover Velveeta cheese I had left over from another recipe. Heavy cream, salt and pepper, that is it. So simple and always a hit. Now, I am not good at cutting like a whole chicken. I have watched so many videos on it, and I can never do it perfectly, but basically, I was just wanting to show y'all that there was no pink in this chicken and that it was not dried out. So here's my plate. I decided to go with a leg and a thigh. Turned out so good. I love the flavor. It was nice and juicy. All the sides turned out so good. I was really proud of this meal. Everyone ended up really enjoying it, and it just made for a really good evening. I did have to go and grab some barbecue sauce for my chicken because I'm the type of person I always have to have some type of dipping sauce, but I'm really pleased with how this turned out. 
I have not bought these great value frozen biscuits in a long time. I honestly forgot how good they were, but as I was looking at the bag for the cooking instructions, I came across this chicken and dumplings recipe and I wanted to give it a try because I had everything on hand to make it. So of course I had that leftover roast chicken from the day before, shredded it up, threw it in this pot. I also had some chicken broth left over in my fridge, so I just dumped it on in there. I definitely used more chicken and more broth than what the original recipe said, but other than that, pretty much followed it to a T. So I'm just stepping in one can of cream of chicken soup. I'm doing two teaspoons of some dried rosemary. I did add in some onion powder and I'm just going to give that a good stir. I have my heat on about medium high and I'm just waiting for that to come up to a boil. So meanwhile, I have had six of those biscuits coming to room temperature and I'm just going to take each one and I'm going to cut it into four equal pieces. So easy peasy. So here my broth is starting to boil. So I'm just going to add in some salt and pepper. I could have done that before, but honestly, I just forgot. Um, but now that it's at like a rolling bowl, I'm going to start dropping those biscuits in one at a time. And I definitely recommend doing it just like this versus like dumping the whole plate in at one time because doing it this way should prevent them from clumping up together. So I'm just taking the back of my spatula and I'm just kind of pushing those down into the broth to make sure it's all covered. I'm going to add a lid and just let it slightly vent and I let it cook for 20 minutes. That is it. I think that this looks very nice, smelt amazing, and y'all, these were the absolute best dumplings. They were perfect. They were so light and fluffy, something that I have been trying to achieve for years. I feel like I have made every dumpling recipe out there, and they always turn out good, but with a lot of effort. The This was like the most least effort chicken and dumplings I have ever made, and I'm telling y'all now, if you like chicken and dumplings, you got to try this recipe out. My only complaint was the rosemary. Like, I loved the flavor of it, but the pieces, like, in my mouth felt kind of odd. So, <laughs> I wish they made, like, a ground-up version of it. But other than that, I will most definitely be making this again. For the last dinner in this video, I'm going to be making my favorite recipe for sloppy joes. So in this bag, I have two pounds of already cooked ground beef. As you can see, it's back from May. I was glad to get that used, but it had been seasoned with salt, pepper, onion, and garlic powder. I obviously didn't plan ahead, so I just dumped it in frozen. I got my lid added on, and I'm going to set it on the warm setting so that that can thaw out quicker. So here we are after a little bit. I got it broken up with a spoon. It's not completely 100% thawed, but but good enough to continue on with the recipe. So I'm gonna dump in one eight ounce can of tomato sauce, a half a cup of ketchup, as well as a half a cup of water, a quarter cup of brown sugar and a quarter cup of flour. The flour is gonna thicken up the sauce later on. Now I'm seasoning it with a tablespoon of chili powder, just some garlic powder to taste, a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar, some just plain old yellow mustard, a few dashes of Worcestershire sauce, and then just some salt and pepper to taste. That is it. I will most definitely have this recipe linked down below in my description box. I have shared this a few times on my YouTube channel. Maybe if you've been here with a while, you remember it. But yeah, definitely one of our favorite recipes. Um, I got that stirred up. I'm going to get the lid added on, and I'm going to let this cook on low for four hours. About halfway through that cooking time, I realized that I left out the onion powder. So here I'm just coming back in to add that. Um, if you like actual onions, you can definitely just cook up an onion with your ground beef, but I don't do that. So anyways, here we are later on in the day after it is fully cooked. I've got a buttered and toasted bun and I'm just piling that sloppy joe meat on top. So I love that it's cooked in a crock pot because I always say it, but it just does something special to the meat versus like cooking it in a skillet. I mean, I'll eat it either way and it's always good but in the crock pot it just gets super tender and those flavors are just like more enhanced it's just incredible so I just topped it with cheese and mustard and I made some onion rings on the side for my husband and then just some rallies fries for me and the kids so this is my plate I also served it with a Clausen pickle and it was just so delicious as it always is and one of my favorite things about it is how well it reheats it is like probably even better the next day just so good this has been my go-to sloppy joe recipe for several years now but that's all i got for you in this video i really hope that like if you were in a dinner rut or just need some inspiration for meals that this video was helpful for you i just love sharing like what's good 
what's not so great. I just love sharing it all with you guys. So if you made it this far in the video, thank you so much for watching. I hope that each and every one of you have an amazing weekend and I will see you guys in my next video.